So let's talk now about white LED arrays. So the white LED arrays are using only white LEDs. And normally, it's very important to understand, it's not directly related to the real world applications, but it's important to understand that normally a white LED is actually a blue LED with a different phosphor. So this is, done to, uh, this is related to the energy that you can get out of a blue LED. It doesn't matter to you as a user because at the end, what you're going to get is a white light source. But this white light source, white, it's a very versatile concept, very flexible concept. So let's talk a bit about the data that you can evaluate when you are selecting a white light source instead of a color light source, RGB-based. So when you're using a white LED array, you, can, you will always find this white uh, letter indicating you that it's a white LED, nothing else. But normally, you need to check for the color temperature of your LED. If you see something like this, sometimes it's spelled as D65, which is a specific uh, position or coordinate in the CIE color space that we use in the professional lighting. Uh, when you see something like that, it means that the LED is meant to perform at 6,500K color temperature. When we see the K, it's Kelvin degrees. And basically, this is telling you that it's as similar as possible to the sunlight. There are some macadam steps or binning related to the LED that basically indicate how close or how far the LED chip will be from the black body curve. And this black body curve, it's a theoretical body that is perfect in color temperature reproduction. reproduction. So basically, if you have an LED that is 6,500K, that means that the manufacturer aims to be as close as possible to a real 6,500K in a theoretical body, black body curve or black body uh, element. Uh, that, in the case of CRI, is the sun. But in the case of the CRI below 4000K, will be uh, a tungsten lamp, for example, that is actually more or less very close to, to a, a black body element. So this said, you can find a cold, bluish white, like the 6500K. You can find a white 5600K. And the differences between the two in the real world are very uh, light or very difficult to evaluate. But basically, an LED that has a 6,500 Kelvin will give you um, color behavior or color reproduction that is closer to what the sun can give you. Because D65 is the color temperature of the sun 12 o'clock in the noon in septentrional Europe. That's the standard that is used for it in, a, of course, clear sky. So using an LED that tries to emulate that will be perfect, for example, for corporate events like a trade show where you have light, as we have here, light from the, from the sun coming in. And you want to mix uh, artificial lighting with this natural lighting. So that's the perfect. Uh, LED for that. 5600K, it's more a broadcast standard or a film standard. Normally, when you're working with cameras, you will see that the white balance, there is always a preset for 5600K. Doesn't matter if it's a video camera uh, or film camera, because even the film, in the film, the, the old uh, um, Kodak films and so on, they were uh, balanced for that color temperature too. So this is a standard that is widely used in the broadcast world. And if you're looking for that kind of luminaire, if you're going to light up that kind of contents, then this LED might be more interesting for you because the colors in camera will look similar to what you see in the eye. Apart from these two cool white sources, because all of them are cool whites, then you can go for a more architectural chip, more using architecture, which is a 4000K. In a 4000K LED, 
It's in between a warm white and a cool white. It's normally the type of uh, color temperatures that you can see in an office. So most of the flu fluorescent lighting in a supermarket or in an office are 4000K. And that means that they are um, somehow more prepared for this working environment. LED is optimized for this color temperature. So if you're using a 4000K LED, you will get a lot of output. More definitely than if you're using a 3000K LED, which is the next LED array that we are going to analyze. A 3000K white, it's a standard of the old days where we were used to use tungsten lamp or halogen lamps. You probably st still have a lot of them in your house. And in theater, it's still the base of lighting. We still use a lot of tungsten lamps, and some of us w really love them. Uh, but when we turn into the LED technology, some manufacturers try to reproduce this behavior of the old tungsten lamps or halogen lamps and do it with LEDs, which means less power consumption, and more versatile options, less heat, blah, blah, blah. So by choosing this LED array, you are more close to that theatrical look. But on the other hand, you are losing a lot of output because the LED technology is definitely never optimized for, for uh, warm whites. It's always optimized for cool whites. There's another option, which is, in my opinion, more interesting, that going for this um, LED arrays, if you're looking for more versatility. And that's a turnover white solution. A turnover white solution is the possibility of using LED chips from different color temperatures all together in a light source to tweak or modify or modulate your light depending on your needs. So if you are in a situation where, let's say, in a Formula One uh, Grand Prix, where you have uh, somebody uh, receiving a trophy, and you have light coming from the sun, and it's becoming the sunset, so the light goes out and it's getting darker, so your artificial lighting, as front lighting, will be needed more and more. And there is a big difference between the warm colors of the sunset, if it's the last part of the sunset, and the uh, color temperature of your artificial lighting. It's very, very useful to have a luminaire that is able to modulate and change slightly the color temperature one way or another. And that's what the turnable white gives you when you have control over the MX or any other system. It's also very important to understand that many manufacturers have the possibility of do, the, do this with RGB options. Because also, when you mix red, green, and blue, you are also obtain white. And depending on how much red or how much blue you add to the mix, you will get a warmer white or you will get a cooler white. So that's everything about LED arrays and the difference between colors and white. One more last thing is the understanding of the relationship between lifetime of the LEDs and the decay of the LEDs. There are a lot of factors here, but two that are very important are the thermal management and to understand that the specifications for the lifetime are related to the output, are related to the color rendering, and are related to the way the LEDs will behave over time. So when you have an LED that, is, that has 50,000 hours of estimated lifetime, you need to understand that the LED, of course, will not perform the same way during the 50,000 hours. Actually, these 50,000 hours, it's normally, we will do another video about that probably, but it's just an emulation on how the LED will behave because no manufacturer of LED chips test their chips for 50,000 hours. They just scale it after a very small test. Sometimes you find other lifetime of 20,000 hours. And normally, white LEDs are 20,000 hours or close to that, while the color LEDs can go more in the 50,000 hours lifetime range. 
It's important to understand that unlike in the uh, traditional lamps, you cannot replace the cubes and the LED array so easily. So this is something to consider. But even more important to consider is how each LED will decay. When you are using a color LED array, you know that if the mix of red, green, and blue generating a white will decay over time, you always have the possibility of changing the parameters and the levels of red and green and blue to calibrate the white again and maintain it 3000K or 5000K or 10,000K, whatever you want. You still have that possibility. And that's because the decay of the LEDs is completely different depending on the color, if it's a red, if it's a green, or if it's a blue. And normally, red LEDs tend to decay sooner. If you're using a white LED array, this is a bit more complicated because you never know how the LEDs will decay. Will they have, will they generate a color shift towards the warm colors, like red, or towards the cool colors, like blue? This you never know, and it's very difficult that you get that information from a manufacturer, because basically not all the manufacturers are testing the fixtures for long periods of time. And each part might be slightly different. Of course, you have a lot of chemicals around. Phosphors are different. The amount of the density of the materials, the quality of the LED chip, and all those things will be uh, mixed, uh, generating a more consistent decay or a more uh, difficult to handle decay. And that means that if you have 12 fixtures and after five years of operation, the white that they will be able to generate, even when they are calibrated in the factory, will not be uh, very similar. There will be slight differences. And might be that some of them are warmer, some of them are bluer. If you're using fixtures from different manufacturers to make the same white, that's even worse. Keeping RGB gives you this possibility to tweak them and still change it over time, even recalibrate them again. But of course, you will get less output. So as a summary, when you are choosing a color array, you get powerful colors or very high color rendering, perfect for dynamic color mixing, but not a super powerful white. When you are choosing a white LED array, you are choosing a lot of output, a clear defined color temperature that you don't need to change or modify in any way. Some of the white LEDs have also a high CRI, at least at the beginning, until the decay comes. But of course, when you need to reproduce colors, you will need to filter it with mechanical systems uh, or any kind of accessory, because the LED by itself, electronically, will not be able to make any additive color mixing. I hope it you enjoyed the video and it was uh, easy to understand. Mm -hmm.